Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the nearby nation, as promised, I'm here to show you how to install the Feed the Beast map pack or basically how to install their own launcher, which is a great launcher, by the way. So first you want to head over to feed-the-beast.com or click the link in the description and it will bring you to this website right here. This is the welcome screen showing you the mod list. All mods are not on there yet. Red Power and EE3 as of right now are not, but they will be soon, hopefully. Uh, so we want to go to the download section up at the very top. Click download. You can either download the jar or the exe if you're running with a Mac. I'm supposing you're going to download the jar. If you're running with Windows, why not choose the exe version? So also you can download the server, which is really cool. I'll show you that here in a second as well. So download exe is what we're going to do. Mine shows up with a dash 2 because uh, this is my third time installing this because I've messed up this video so many times. But anyways, here we go. Just delete that off there. This is exactly what yours is going to look like. Sorry about the loud keyboard noises. Uh, I'm going to open this up and run it. Now what this is going to give you is basically a launcher style as in, and this is the only time I'm going to compare it to the Technic launcher. It's the only thing. It's pretty much just a launcher, but for those of you who don't know that much about launchers, this is pretty much what you want to see. <laughs> so at the very top, you'll see the, uh, the command log or the launcher console. So you can see what's happening in the background, which is really cool. So you know nothing else is happening except for what's up here. There's three packs available as of right now at this moment. You have the Feed the Beast Beta Pack A, which uh, is what I'll be using. It has a lot of the stuff, but again, not all the stuff that's supposed to be in there. Red Power, again, is not in there, and EE3 is not in there. You have the Voxel Mod Pack. So even you can switch from the Technic Launcher now because you can actually use the Voxel Mod Pack on here, which is awesome. And I'm pretty sure maybe hack slash mine will get on here too eventually. Who knows? Uh, we got Feed the Beast Retro SSP. So if you ever seen me play the pyramid style Feed the Beast map, this basically downgrades you to 1.2.5, throws the map in there for you, and uh, lets you play. It's really awesome. I think this is probably the easiest way to get up and running. So also over here, eventually, you'll see. Oh, here's the map that you can download. There's two maps Insanity and Raider. FTB pyramid pack so that's really cool so any new maps that come out for the mod pack it's really easy to throw in there um, maybe eventually it'd be awesome if they allowed uh, let's players to throw their maps in their server so you could download them that way who knows we'll see uh, in the options section you can choose to install to which folder it installs to whichever folder that you put the item in so my exe is in my FTB folder on my desktop so it shows right there you can force update you can change the RAM usage like if you want two gigs of RAM or whatever else. In the news section, of course, it'll tell you exactly everything that needs to be uh, said. The release, the fact that they might be going to PAX East, or they are coming to the upcoming PAX East. A whole bunch of other stuff, guys. So now let's get down to the nitty gritty and press the launch button. Of course, we need to select a profile. So I'm going to go ahead and create a profile real quick, which is my own profile. Yes, I know. So sneaky, right? All right. Now that it's created down here, we can just go ahead and launch it. Hopefully I got my password right. Apparently I did. It will download the Minecraft, the Minecraft.jar. As you can see in the background, it's right here. It's downloading everything needed. Apparently, I guess the default is set to download. Ooh. They might be hanging. They might be busy right now. We'll see. Downloading mod pack. Please wait. You're, of course, downloading this from a repo, so it's going to have to go to the internet, grab the files, bring them back to you. So it could take a little bit, depending on the... There we go. 29 megs. That's not bad. I'll be right back when this finishes, guys. All right, so we're back. It just installed everything. So as you can see, we're on 1.2.5 because the default settings for this uh, setup is to launch the retro. So we just want to make sure that it's on this one. And I guess we can just double click this one. It was on that one before, but we'll see. Let's see if we can download this again. There we go. Now it's downloading the right one. This one's a little bit smaller than the retro one, and it goes a little bit faster. 
So that's not too bad. We'll be right back when that gets done. And we're back once again. Now we're in 1.4.2. So that's how easy it is to just download which packs you want. Again, you just open it back up. And now that those are both downloaded, I can select them. And either one will open up like it's supposed to. There's no more downloading or anything, just validating. Comes back up and you're good. If you want to check to make sure which mods are installed, I'll show you here in a second after this one gets installed. Okay, gonna come back here, open up the launcher again. If you want to check to see which mods are installed, you can just go to Edit Mod Pack, and it, this will allow you to enable or disable stuff really easily. Now, the good thing about this is, say, I don't know, I'm not a really good Twilight Forest person, so I'm gonna just disable Twilight Forest, or you know what, I don't really like uh, Greg's tech, so I'm gonna disable that. Or maybe I want to add my own mod right here. Click add mod and you can add your own mod. So that's awesome, right? That makes everything so much easier to do. Like, oh, this is so much easier. As you can see, it also shows that Minecraft Forge is installed and we got Code Chicken Core and not enough items. But all these things are installed right here. And as it progresses, we'll probably see R, R or Red Power and uh, EE installed pretty soon as well. So other than that, that is the mod pack itself. There is, of course, server play, which I'm fixing to show you right now. You can come over here and click download server. It will download the server for you. Mine's four because I've downloaded the server that many times, but we'll be right back after that gets downloaded. And once again, we're back. FTP beta, we're gonna open that up. I'm just gonna throw all these over here into a server folder that I made. That's all that's in that folder right now is those server files. So if I open this up, you will see configs, core mods, mods, FTB, beta, A, readme, server start, bat, and server start sh. So we just want to double click the server start, and this will go ahead and start up the server for us. Now, as long as you have 25565 port forwarded, you should have no problem getting this done. As you can see, 25565 is the default server being forwarded to. And there it goes, it's done. So I can go ahead and launch this up. Should be no problem. Again, you don't need the uh, command log open if you don't want it open. Should be able to get a local host, which is where I'm hosting it, at my own home. Click join server. logging in and now I'm playing on a server on my own computer so I can invite friends over no problem and it's got all the mods installed and ready to go so there you go that's how you do it this is really easy to do and all my uh, stuff will be server play but it will be multi or single player as well so you can put it wherever you want the map itself but uh, if you guys didn't catch the live stream I am thinking about inviting guests along on my main series so other than that thanks for watching and we will see you guys in the main series bye everyone